Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Fazbear Entertainment would like you to put your hands together for the one, the only, Freddy Fazbear. Rewritten! Gregory fell down the slide, the world being swept away into darkness. The sudden loss of his sight sent another sickening wave of dread through him, his insides flipping over as he plummeted. His hands reached out, scraping against the plastic sides, his heels doing the same. He fell and fell and fell until finally the slide leveled out into a horizontal path. He was shot out the end like a bullet, blinded by a burst of light. The slide hurtled him into some sort of pile of fist-sized things, things that softened the landing. A ball pit. He squirmed around, breaking up to the surface, immediately choking out a delirious sob and pressing his eyes shut. It was painfully bright in here, so much so that he could see the red veins on the inside of his eyelids. He curled up, every inch of him shaking, blinking tears out of his eyes as he adjusted to the brightness of the new area that he had been tossed into. The daycare. It was a very large place, the ceiling stretching tall above him into a blue dome that was painted to look like the sky, something that reminded him of an observatory. There were so many things in here, his eyes hurt from zipping left and right. A large, towering play place loomed in a corner, filled with all sorts of tunnels and slides and circular windows to peep out of. Different layouts of obstacles packed each level, offering endless spaces to hide and chase others around, with nets to make sure that nobody fell off by accident. Every color of the rainbow was splattered over the playground, strange white patches here and there, but still beaming in a way that set his sockets on fire. He caught sight of overfilled toy boxes, neatly stacked foam blocks, a washing station for paint, so many things that he was not calm enough to properly examine. Right now, the daycare was lifeless, despite how bright and colorful it all was. Instead of being filled with children, the playful cavern was suspended in an empty hibernation that felt unnatural compared to its light. <gasps> a gasp shocked him back to his senses. A gasp that came from... above him? Gregory looked up, spotting some sort of golden tower on one of the back walls. At the very top was a semicircle arch, decorated with orange triangles in the image of a rising sun, giving way to a room up there that he couldn't see into at this angle. There, at the very top, was a tall, lanky figure, made of bright golden colors with a strange frill of spikes circling his face. He'd been doing something whenever Gregory came in, having a wad of paper towels in one hand and a cleaning spray bottle in the other, polishing the tower's arch. It looked down at him, gaping, dropping the two items in awe. Oh my gosh, it said. Are, are you real? What? Who are you? Gregory asked, his voice barely making it out of his trembling throat. Hang on, hang on, the golden thing said, throwing the cleaning supplies into the tower's room. J just stay right there, I'll come to you. The golden thing backed up a bit, readying himself, and then ran up to the edge of the platform and took a dive. He landed right in the ball pit, slipping below the surface in a scatter of colorful plastic balls. And then, to Gregory's horror, he started to swim his way over to him. Gregory cried out, scrambling back, the multicolored balls of the pit shifting and spilling around him, rendering any of his attempts to get away pointless. Oh no! Gregory yelled, reaching out to the edge of the pit, trying to escape. He wasn't fast enough, it was catching up to him, right behind him, right... Spindly hands clasped around him and hoisted him up under the armpits. The rest of the stranger burst into the surface, throwing plastic balls in every direction. Hello, little guy! The thing greeted loudly as fish shoved into Gregory's. Oh, look at you! You're just a tiny one! Oh, you have no idea how happy I am to see you! I knew it! I knew they didn't forget about me! <laughs> Gregory clung to his wrists, vaguely registering the sound of little tinkling bells, paralyzed with terror. He was sure that it was an animatronic now. The thing was much taller than a normal adult, easily lifting him up off the ground, built with long, spidery limbs that took up most of his body. The spike's sprouting golden face had a pointed nose stabbing out from the middle, a two-wide grin taking up half his features. Two large, starry blue eyes honed in on Gregory, too much for him to handle. The golden animatronic smile faded into horror after the first few seconds passed, his grip loosening. Oh! Oh! I I'm sorry! Did I scare you? The spiky goldy thing asked, looking quite panicked now. He jumped out of the ball pit and set Gregory down, kneeling with him, saying in a rush, I I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> Gregory was crying again. He only realized when the golden guy had mentioned it, but his face was completely wet at this point, snot streaming down from his nose into his mouth. A rush of fear came after realizing that. Gregory tried to say something, but all he could get out was a pitiful wheezing moan. He gripped his face, terrified. No, 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 please don't cry, the golden animatronic practically begged. Do, do, do you want a hug? Here, I'll help. With that, he snatched him up into a tight embrace, arms looping several times around him, trapping him. 
Gregory yelped and fought against it at first, but the animatronic's grip was vice-like, not giving him an inch of breathing room. Luckily, it wasn't really sharp and hard like he thought it would be. The animatronic was actually very soft, his shell seeming to have a layer of fuzzy felt over it, the warmth of it nicer than he would have expected. Still, he couldn't get out of it, no matter if he was comforted by it or not. He had no choice but to try and stop crying as fast as he could, even though the animatronic didn't look mad. Gregory bit his tongue hard, holding his breath. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, you whiny little... He trapped it all inside, pushing it away. When he grew dizzy, he allowed himself a shaky breath, holding it again and then continuing once he was sure that he'd stopped it. No, shut up! The animatronic snapped suddenly. Go away! So sorry, Gregory said, guilt weighing heavily on him. Oh, oh no, n not you! The animatronic shook his head quickly. Sorry, I'm talking to him again. Without much more explanation, the animatronic loosened his hold and looked down at him again, asking, Are, are, are you good now? Gregory shook himself, pushing away from him, still kneeled on the ground. He was finally able to properly take in the golden animatronic's features. With a second glance, the frill around his face that he had seen as spines didn't look as threatening. They appeared to be made out of crinkling cloth, soft little triangles imitating the rays of a beaming sun. The animatronic himself wasn't huge and powerful like Freddy, instead built thin and stick-like, even though he looked just about as tall. He wore poofy striped pants held by suspenders, a large rounded bell hanging from his neck in the middle of a frill of fluffy red fabric. He was absolutely covered in yellow and tangerine colors, like he'd been dunked in a bucket full of melted sunsets. Bells were tied around his wrists, jingling of his movements. A big happy mouth hung beneath a long nose, cloudless blue eyes round and glowing faintly like two little stars. Still, despite all that, something about him was unsettling Gregory in a way that he didn't have a name for. Maybe the smile was too big, maybe it was because he could feel now that the animatronic was shivering without an obvious reason. Gregory finally wheezed out, yeah, I'm fine. Oh, I'm so sorry, the animatronic stammered. I, I just feel awful about screaming in your face. I was just... Uh, he stopped everything, eyes down on the new cut that Gregory had forgotten about. Oh no, what happened to your knee? I, um, fell, he said, not making eye contact. It's fine. Well, hang on, I got bandages. J just stay still for a moment, okay, little guy? The animatronic said, opening up his stomach hatch and fishing out bandages and ointment. Again, a strange detail stuck out to him as odd. While the animatronic was trying to apply the medicine, his hands were shaking so bad it was clearly causing him a lot of trouble. He kept on blinking and rubbing his eyes with his other hand, trying to focus. Gregory winced away from him, but stayed quiet as he squished it on. Oh, no, go away, the animatronic whispered under his breath, one of his sunbeams twitching on the top of his head with a nervous tick. You're wrong. Gregory couldn't find a space to figure out what that meant. Once he was about done, though, he asked, Who... Who are you? Oh, sorry, the golden animatronic replied. I'm Sun, the daycare attendant. What's your name, little guy? G Gregory, he stammered. Well, good Gregory, I'm happy to have you, Sun laughed, one of his eyes twitching as he leaned back and put the supplies away. I'm so sorry for being so loud, I'm just... Sun's eyes lit up with the same exhilaration he had before. He sprang up from the floor, his torso and upper half rotating 360 degrees in a joyful spin. I'm just so excited to see you! I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for so long to play with kids again! We're gonna have so much fun together! He started bobbing up and down, the bells on his wrist jingling merrily, words spilling out of him so fast it was almost impossible to keep up. So what do you want to do first, huh? We can finger paint, tell stories, drink fizzy fats until our heads explode, and then stay up all night! Sun hit himself in the face. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> He almost fell over at that, giggling hysterically, something spazzing out in his eyes. Gregory just kind of stared up at him worriedly, overwhelmed by the ridiculous amount of energy he was radiating, not really knowing how to react. This new animatronic's face was happy, but there were so many tiny things about him that made Gregory uneasy. His grin was far too wide, the corners of it stabbing up into his round cheeks, eyes bugged out so large it looked like they'd pop right out. He was still shaking a lot, every movement exaggerated and uncoordinated, twitches flickering through his sunbeams. He looked twice at his spindly hands. Gregory obviously didn't know what he was supposed to look like, but the gold color of his covering was washed out on his hands, as if they had been bleached. Growing more uncomfortable by the second, Gregory said, Um, no, we don't have to do anything. Somehow, that only seemed to make his desperation worse. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not usually like this. He reached to him, arms trembling as much as his voice. What, what do you want to do? We can do anything you want, as long as you're having fun. We can... No, no, shut up already. The excited tone had abruptly cut off at the end, shocking him. I'm sorry, Gregory said, stepping away. No, not you, Sun said again, shaking himself off, a sunbeam twitching violently on the side of his head. I'm talking to my brother, ignore him. Gregory just blinked up at him, a chill running up his back. His mind flashed back to the closed sign that he had seen outside the daycare's entrance. He realized that Sun was waiting for an answer. We don't have to play, Gregory told him, hugging his limbs closer. I'm fine just standing here. Are, are you sure? Sun asked, growing more panicked by the second. Are you okay? What do you need? What do I do? We can... He hesitated a moment, then forced out. You can pull my arm off if you want. What? If it'll make you laugh, I'm fine with it, Sun said, voice breaking as he begged. Please, just, just tell me what I'm doing wrong, please! Gregory was only growing more freaked out the longer that this went on. He was about to try and find some other way to calm him down, but his growling stomach interrupted him. Oh, are you hungry? Sun asked. I can go get you some food. Uh, yeah. Gregory shuffled his feet, latching onto that new idea. Y yes, please. All right! Sun stopped himself before he ran off, though. He seemed torn between fulfilling his wish and staying with him. Just, just stay right there, Sun said, each word smashing together in an endless current. And don't break the rules while I'm gone! Then I'd have to kick you out and that would be very upsetting! I'll be back! And with that, he turned and immediately staggered and fell over. He stopped a second time, calling back to him. Oh, and look out for spiders! There's a lot of them in here and I have no idea where they're coming from! Without much more explanation, he got up again and sped away across the padded blue floors, whisking out of sight before Gregory even had time to process the sentence. Okay? <laughs> this... this animatronic was a lot. Gregory had no idea what to feel about this. He was still getting whiplash from narrowly escaping Vanessa only a few minutes ago. All this excitement from a stranger was actually annoying him more than anything, not knowing why in the world he was so ridiculously desperate for his attention. Sun was already giving him crazy vibes, even worse than Freddy. By the time Gregory broke out of the shock of his appearance, he had time to properly understand what Sun had said, glancing over to where Sun had gestured whenever talking about the breaking the rules. Sure enough, there was a big poster that he had missed before. It was displayed there like the Ten Commandments, the bold red letters reading... <clears throat> rules. No making messes, no jumping off the playground, no climbing up the slide, no licking the floors, no eating glitter glue, no chasing people with scissors, no throwing things at each other, and no fighting. No hitting, biting, kicking, shoving, climbing, slapping, spitting at, or screaming at sun. No dogs allowed. Cats are allowed. No playing the mangle game. No pulling sun's arm off. And then, at the very bottom, an extra sheet of paper was taped on, repeating one of the previous rules and adding new ones as well. No making messes. No talking to brother. Keep the lights on. Gregory stared, something not lining up right with the extra paper. He looked at the direction that sun had disappeared, then back down with a sigh, still trying to calm down from the spike of adrenaline the animatronic had given him. He took another look around the rest of the daycare, taking in the playground, the toy boxes, the ball pit... There was something off about the whole place, actually, not just sun. The plastic surfaces were spotless, untouched by dirt nor grime, all except for strange white marks. He thought it was spilled glue or something at first, but as he squinted at a nearby part of it on the padded floors, he realized that that wasn't the case. The paint was scrubbed off in big patches. There was another thing wrong, though. The blinding light wasn't coming from where he expected. There were globe-shaped lights set about the ceiling and across the walls at each of the clouds, but they were all dark enough right now. Instead, the place was lit up by three or more sets of large mobile security lights, set up on wheels. The wires that were powering them were all trailing across the floor and converging at the play place, leading up to the top where he heard the rumbling of a large generator. He was about to look back at the rules when suddenly... Gregory! He jumped, <laughs> snapping his head back and forth, unable to find where the voice had come from. It sounded just like... It's me! Gregory looked down at his wrist. Sure enough, Freddy's voice was coming from the Faz watch again. The communications tab was opened, a message making it to him. Are you okay? Freddy's voice asked. Where did you go? Gregory didn't respond at first, wondering what would happen. Gregory, please come in! Freddy's voice asked again. Are you alright? Do you need help? 
Gregory messed up the communications tab, finding the reply button. I'm- I'm all right. Where did you go? Again, Gregory considered not answering, but realized that if he wanted answers about the closed sign, he had to give up his position. I'm in the daycare, he admitted. Is Vanessa with you? Yes, she's with me, Freddy's voice came back. But don't worry, I don't have to speak aloud to send these messages. It's good that you hid well enough, but but you can't be in the daycare. Why not? It's closed. You have to return to me, Freddy explained. A heat rose in his throat. Why? Is something wrong here? Gregory asked after a pause. Well, Freddy said, you should be all right with Sun, but he's not supposed to be in use right now. There was an accident. Before Gregory processed that, Freddy continued to explain, Sun is very close to Vanessa as well. He will trust her and give you up once she comes to do a regular patrol around the daycare. The heat only grew, but Gregory stammered, Oh, so, so what do I do then? Once I get away from Vanessa, I can come and pick you up at the daycare to find a better place to hide you, Freddy said. Sun isn't hurting you, is he? No. Oh, good, Freddy sighed. Just keep Sun distracted until I get to you. He's probably very happy to have you there. Just don't talk about leaving until I can come and pick you up. He won't let you leave without an adult. Okay, Gregory said. I'll do that. Freddy hung up. Gregory was still caught up on the last statement whenever Freddy's voice disappeared, too many thoughts berating him all at once, not knowing which one to believe. He didn't feel safe here. But then again, he hadn't felt safe with Freddy either. He had no way of knowing which one was better. Some seemed like he had good intentions, but his spastic behavior was freaking him out and exhausting him at the same time. However, he was soon realizing that he probably had no choice on whether he wanted to leave or not. Sun was returning already, several small bags of chips in his arms. He looked like he was trying to be fast, but he kept on tripping and stumbling, not seeming to be able to retain his balance for more than a few steps. All right, I didn't know which flavor you wanted, so I just got all of them, Sun said as he approached, nearly falling flat on his face at least three more times before making it to Gregory. He dumped all the snack-sized chip bags onto the floor, listing them off. Okay, we got classic spicy cheese, sour cream and onion... No matter his trust issues, Gregory couldn't resist the offer of food. He had already grabbed the nearest one and ripped it open, digging in, a burst of flavor giving him a wave of relief. Thank you, sir, Gregory said between bites. Please don't choke, Sun chirped, plopping down beside him and hugging him close with one arm. He was several mouthfuls in before Gregory even cared to register the flavor. He had apparently gotten the spicy one, which he didn't mind at all. After finishing off the first small snack bag, Gregory got to wash it down with a few gulps of the fizzy soda. He took a second bag, this time going slower, to avoid making himself sick. He immediately wanted to take all of them with him and save them somehow. He needed these, all of these. He could ration it out and even save some for... He halted in his thoughts, finally registering what Sun was doing. He was patting the top of Gregory's head like he was trying to brush something off. At Gregory's confused look, Sun explained blarily, There's spiders in your hair. Gregory jolted at that, quickly trying to shake them off, before realizing after several sweeps that nothing was there. Oh, good, they f flew off, Sun giggled, looking up. <laughs> Gregory just nodded and kept on eating, not knowing what to do. After a few more minutes, his attention was drawn back to Sun. He was leaning closer, but after a glance, it didn't seem to be intentional. Sun's head kept on bobbing up and down, struggling to open his eyes again and again as they kept drooping shut. I won't, Sun muttered, shaking his head roughly. You're not gonna eclipse me. Stop trying. I won't let you. There was something wrong with him. Very wrong. Freddy's warning pressed up in the back of his head. He had to be sure. Um, Mr. Sun? Gregory piped up. His head jerked up with a, ha <laughs> ha, what is it? What do you know about the night guard? Gregory asked, probing carefully. She seems scary. Oh, Vanny! Sun perked up, the smile making Gregory's hope sink. Oh, sh she's not scary. We're best friends, actually. I haven't seen her in a while, but I'm sure that she'll visit me any day now. Oh, Gregory said, heaviness settling in his gut. Great. <laughs> um, ignore brother. I promise I'm not with him, Sun told him, confusing him once again as he swatted at empty air, hissing, Go away! That quick reaction passed without any acknowledgement. Sun kept on smiling, another beam twitching along of his eye. 
discomfort squirmed inside of him. It was then that the intensity, the yelling, all of it clicked. He was all forced. He was trying too hard. Are... are you okay? Gregory asked next. What? Yes! Sun laughed a bit too loudly as if what he said was hilarious. <laughs> oh, yes! Of course I'm okay! Every, everything has been great in here! I'm, ju I'm just so excited to have you here! It's been so long since I've been around kids! How long has the daycare been closed? Gregory asked warily. 29 days, 2 hours, and 13 minutes! Sun replied immediately. And... Why was the daycare closed? Gregory asked. Sun's smile faltered. Oh, pff, don't worry about that! He laughed, crinkling sunbeams fluttering. His voice hitched, a surge of emotion cutting through his feature as he yelled, Sh -sh -sh Shut up! Go away! You're being paranoid! Gregory flinched away, dropping the chip bag. Noticing that, Sun quickly said, Sorry, sorry, <laughs> ignore brother. He's, he's being really, really stupid again. Uh-huh. Gregory nodded slowly, once again questioning his sanity. Gregory? Both of them jumped at the voice, attention snapped to Gregory's oversized faz watch. He fumbled with the faz watch, responding with, Yes, sir? I made it to the daycare entrance, Freddy said. Tell Sun your parents are- oh, Hey, look at that! Gregory interrupted nervously, catching Sun's confused expression. My dad's back! Really? Where? Freddy asked. <laughs> yeah, Dad, thanks for coming to pick me up, Gregory said through a grin. Sorry, but I gotta leave now. Oh, yes, uh, Gregory has to leave now. I am Dad, Freddy said, correcting himself. Sun froze up, smile dissipating. Leave? He echoed. Yeah, Gregory said carefully. But, but you just got here, Sun protested, hugging Gregory closer, voice cracking. Can't you just stay a little longer? Gregory's heartbeat quickened as he pulled away from Sun and got to his feet, saying cautiously, Sorry, but I gotta go home now, okay? Sun looked broken, his sunbeams drooping, staring at the ground. Gregory half expected him to burst into tears. Did, did I do good? Sun asked, finally breaking the quiet as he got up as well. Do, do you think the other kids are gonna come soon? It's, it's been so lonely here, and it, I've tried so hard. The desperation in his eyes made it hard to say anything other than, uh, yeah, you did well. You were really nice. Thank you for giving me food, sir. I'll, I'll tell them that you were good, but I gotta go now. Oh, okay, Sun said, voice completely lifeless now. F fine, if, if you really want to leave. Sun took Gregory's hand in his bleached one and slumped his way towards the exit. Without another word, they wandered across the padded blue floors, passing several white patches as they went. A large set of stairs led up to a ground level, where the pickup spot was, the polished railing shimmering and spotless like the rest of the place. Sun had trouble getting up the steps, which Gregory thought was his version of stalling, but soon realized after the first few trips that the mistakes were real. His foot kept on coming down too high or too low, each misstep causing him to wobble and nearly fall over again. Sorry, he muttered, rubbing his eyes. Sorry, the, the floor and the walls keep moving. I don't feel so good. They made it to the top eventually, reaching the big golden doors labeled Daycare Pickup. Sun touched the door and fumbled with the handle for a few moments, opening it up, about to push Gregory through. But then everything came to a screeching halt as Sun saw who was waiting for them. Freddy stood there with a big, nervous grin, filling up the doorframe, arms folded behind his back. It appeared that he had removed his small top hat in some pitiful attempt at a disguise. Sun's grip tightened around Gregory's shoulders, pulling him back. His cheerful demeanor was nowhere to be found, replaced by complete and total seriousness. "'What are you doing here?' Sun asked, voice even as it's been the whole night. Freddy broke the thickening silence with an energetic, Hello, daycare attendant. I'm Mr. Gregory. I'm I'm here to pick up a Gregory Jr. Yep, that's my dad right there. Gregory nodded along, reflecting the same grin to Sun. You can you could go back to sleep now. I'll just <clears throat> He tried to pry himself away from Sun, but the animatronic pulled him back further, putting himself between Gregory and Freddy. He glared suspiciously at them both, looking from one to the other, his sunbeams twitching back in agitation. <laughs> okay, th this is very funny, Freddy, 
Son attempted a laugh, already closing the door. You know I can't. Wait! Freddy stomped a foot in, blocking the door from shutting. Tension shot through Son's form, spindly hands tightening further over Gregory. He doesn't want to stay with you, Freddy told him. I can take him back to his parents. Where's Vanessa? Son said, leaning to look past Freddy. He can't leave with you. A large part of Gregory's screamed for him to agree with Son. Freddy's towering figure was more than disturbing to see in the doorway, eyes gleaming down upon him, his golden necklace reflecting the blue light from his irises. Please, son, Gregory said, regretting every word. I want to go with Freddy. I can't go to Vanessa. He can't, Freddy agreed, explaining in a rush. Vanessa gave me a dangerous programming chip. She's trying to capture Gregory to hurt him. Son blinked blarely up at them a few seconds, one eye drooped half-closed. He shook his head to correct that and laughed. <laughs> what? Is is this some sort of a joke? Are you malfunctioning? No, I'm not, Freddy argued. Give him to me. Hey! <laughs> no, 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 no. I I'm sorry, Freddy, Son said, still attempting to chuckle. I, I don't want to be the bad guy here, but I, I can't leave you alone with a kid after hours. It's against my programming, you know that. He tried again to shut the door, but Freddy's foot didn't budge. Please, let me go, Gregory tried. I need to get out of here. Yeah, let him go, Freddy said, reaching in through the doorway. He wants to go. I said no! Son slapped Freddy's hand away with such ferocity, it sent panic stabbing through Gregory. He curled away, hands thrown over his head, expecting the same treatment. It didn't come, however. Son was trembling of fear, standing between Gregory and Freddy, backing away from the huge animatronic. Honestly, Gregory understood the reaction. No, absolutely not, Son said through gritted teeth, beginning to crack at the edges whenever he turned back to tell Gregory, Look, I'm sorry, little guy. I know that he's really big and cool, but Freddy is super, super dangerous. Son, please, Freddy begged. I'm not trying to hurt him. I just... No, 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 shush, Son said, stepping back with Gregory hidden behind him. He's just a little baby. You could squash him flat by accident. There's, there's so many things that could go wrong. Even thinking about that seemed to be making Sun emotional. He sighed, sunbeams fluttering nervously around his face. Please, j just let me do my job, okay? He's hurt and hungry and lost, and he, he needs to be taken care of. I am not failing at this again, okay? Wait, but... Freddy tried. It was too late. Sun kicked Freddy's foot out of the door and slammed it shut, locking it with a click of his shaking fingers. Sun sighed in relief, leaning against the door, looking back to Gregory with growing anxiety. He shook that look off, replacing it with the same smile as before. It's it's okay, he said, voice picking up speed again as the crinkly sunbeam spun around his head. This is still fine. I can take care of you as long as you need, okay? Everything is going to be fine. But, Gregory said, but, but won't taking care of me suck? Aren't you tired? <laughs> That's not important! Sun waved that off and eyes spazzing out. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. I can't sleep without him coming out. Staying awake is my specialty nowadays. Woo! <laughs> He hit himself in the face again and started laughing hysterically, clumsily pushing Gregory away from the door. Sun scooped him up into his soft arms, leaping off the side of the railing. He let go of him whenever they'd landed safely at the bottom, snapping his head to the right and scolding to the empty air with, Oh, shut up! It's your fault anyway! He automatically added to Gregory, Not you! Gregory nodded with a nervous grin, stepping back, trying to think of what to do. His gaze drifted, following the cloud-painted walls. His eyes found the rules poster again, especially the most recent additions. Initially, he shot the idea down. He was already a bad enough kid as it was. But being handed over to Vanessa would be worse than any creative punishments that Sun could think of. Gregory was already shivering at the thought, glancing back to Sun. He was teetering back and forth and actively struggling to stay conscious, rubbing his heavy eyes fiercely every time they dragged himself shut. Surely he wouldn't be able to take much more, and maybe Gregory could get him to give in if he just... He inched his way over to one of the nearby block towers. It was made of three large, foam-covered cylinders, stacked up with the intricate swirling patterns lined up perfectly. Oh, do you want to play with... With a weak little tap, he knocked the light blocks over. He hadn't really expected anything big to happen, but instead, Sun reacted like he'd sent a tornado through the daycare. Oh no, no, no! 
Sun yelped, an unnatural spasm racking his body. Oh, what a mess! Which one's the bottom? Where is the top? Clean up! Clean up! He was upon the blocks immediately, grabbing them and shoving them into the right order with the intensity of someone defusing a bomb. When all the blocks were stacked up and lined up properly, Sun stepped back with a sigh, taking a moment to calm down. Once that was over, Sun spun back around towards Gregory, triangular sunbeams crinkling back in displeasure. Gregory! He scolded. Don't do that! Everything has to be perfect! Sorry! Gregory yelled, already moving to the next tower. I'm sorry, sir, I have to- <gasps> No! Wait! The next tower scattered. No! Clean up! Sun cried, leaping to its scattered pieces, actually falling over this time. Sun groaned and tried to get up, setting the blocks upright again from the floor. Once he'd fixed it, he staggered to his feet and turned to him, pleading with, Gregory, stop! You're being bad! Sorry, sir, you can kick me out if you want! Gregory called back, pushing over another tower, anxieties clashing around in his head. That's what you're doing? Sun yelled, gripping his sunbeams in dread. No! No! I can't let you- He knocked down another, Gregory! Clean up! Sun's speed alarmed him. In about three strides, he was setting up the tower, now rounding towards Gregory, reaching to grab him. The only reason that he missed was because of his poor coordination. He clumsily grabbed at a spot too far to the left, giving Gregory time to dodge as he tried to collect his sluggish balance. He shrieked, terror stabbing up through him at the sight, every instinct telling him to stop and give up before it got worse. Gregory fought down the urge to curl up onto the floor, darting towards the playground's entrance instead, Sun yelling after him the whole way. <gasps> no, Gregory! Take your shoes off! Gregory, I swear! Gregory plunged into the play place, the narrow space forcing him to crouch. He found a ladder and began climbing, Sun's frantic jangling bells not far behind. Gregory, why do you even want to leave a Freddy? Sun called after him, still in hot pursuit. You could just stay safe with me! Do you, don't you want a puppet show? I, I have glitter glue, do you like glitter glue? Googly eyes! Sorry, I'm so sorry, sir, you're really nice, but, but I can't stay here. Gregory ducked and weaved around the various foam obstacles set around the play place. He had to make his way across neck-covered bridges, crawl through tunnels with glass stones at every corner, duck between horizontal beams meant to slow him down. He spiraled higher and higher and higher into the play place, soon recognizing the rhythm of it. Each level had one drop-down hole, each in different spaces. It was difficult to find each new exit, and the only reason he was able to keep ahead of the much more experienced son was the fact that the animatronic was so exhausted he kept on running into everything and falling over. Finally, gasping for breath, he stopped at the very top level. There was a ceiling here, a small set of spiraling stairs leading up to a narrow tower at the top with a door. When he climbed up to open it, it was guarded by a child's safety lock that clung to the handle. He already knew his way around those. They were put all over the food cabinets whenever Mom got mad. He gripped it the right direction and opened it, flying through while Sun yelled, No! Wait! You're not supposed to go up there! Finally, he was out on the roof of the play place. He could see the light globes more clearly now, their dark surfaces glittering against the portable lights on the floor. The roof of the play place looked like the top of a castle, the tiny locked tower that he'd come up in sporting a sunny flagpole, the triangle of fabric flopping down for now. Another detail caught his eye. He found the generator that was powering the portable lights. The cords were all connected to a huge orange generator squatted in the edge of the roof, rumbling loudly to keep the place lit. Gregory put his hands on the generator, finding the switch, remembering the last rule. Out of all the rules, that one seemed to be the least dangerous to break. Sun's frazzled animatronic head finally popped up from the tower's doorframe, gasping for breath. His eyes grew wide whenever he saw what he was doing. <gasps> no, Gregory! He yelled, panic surging through him. Sorry, sir, I have to do this, Gregory said. <gasps> no, 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 wait, hold on! Son, I'm going to do wait, it Wait, 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 time you... out, time no, out! No, I don't want to play! Wait, 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 please, you have to listen to me! Sun hollered, waving both lanky arms around in the air frantically. Don't turn the generator off! Keep the lights on is the most important rule! Why? What happens when the lights turn off? Gregory asked, throwing up one of his arms in exasperation and deciding to humor him. It'll trigger the nap time protocol and, and I'll go to sleep, Sun explained, fiercely rubbing at his heavy eyes to keep them opened. Don't make me go to sleep, please! I won't be able to protect you anymore! I don't need to be protected! Gregory snapped, tightening his grip over the red lever. I need to get out of here! Sun only grew even more freaked out whenever he saw that, condensation dripping down his golden face as he gasped out, Gregory, please! We can talk about this. You don't need to do that! 
He was cautiously reaching towards him with quivering fingers like he was trying to calm a rabid animal. Hey, tell you what, if you want to leave so badly, I promise I will let you go first thing when Vanny comes back. How does that sound? Gregory had enough. Maybe it was because of how late it was. Maybe it was because the pressure of Vanessa was closing in tighter than ever. Or maybe he just wanted to prove a point to the stubborn animatronic. But no matter what, Gregory still did it. He pulled the lever. All at once, a mighty clank electrified the air. Every single mobile security light that had kept the place brightly lit was cut off, dunking the daycare into almost total darkness. The only light to see by were big glow-in-the-dark stars scattered over the walls, their faint green hue glistening against every surface. Sun's eyes floated there against his black silhouette, completely white with a ring of a blue iris zipping around in fright. No, oh, Sun whispered breathlessly before his panic rose into a wail. No, 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 no! That was Gregory's first sign that something was wrong. But, initially, it only seemed like Sun was being dramatic. His spindly fingers dug into the soft sunbeams that framed his face, yanking on them hard enough that Gregory expected for him to pull them out completely. Sun's yell bent into a straining whimper, as if he were suddenly carrying a great weight. Lights on! Lights on! He shrilled, his eyes slamming shut just as the world exploded into blinding light. Gregory thought for several dazzled moments that the daycare had been struck by lightning, but as his reddened vision cleared, he saw the daycare's real lights, the small crystal globes scattered across the ceiling, were on now, not the generator lights. <laughs> Turn the generator back on! Sun pleaded, the fear in his voice initially appearing ridiculous for the situation. Please, turn the generator back on! I can't hold this for very long! He's going to kill you if he finds you! The lights flickered, then came back on, sun shivering with effort as the globes grew dim. And that was when Gregory recognized the life-or-death situation for what it was. F what do you mean? Gregory spluttered, struggling to keep up with the animatronic's terror, taking a step back. Who? My brother, Moon! Sun yelled, spazzing white eyes rotating and fixating on him, full of such desperation that it sent a chill up Gregory's spine, all the way up into the back of his scalp. He's sick! He's not supposed to be in use right now! You haven't heard of what Moon did? N no Gregory asked, his chest squeezing until he was as breathless as the panicking Sun. I, I, I just got here! Who are you talking about? Sun grabbed Gregory's shoulders so roughly it hurt, yanking him around to look back at him rather than the rest of the daycare. He looked so afraid, every part of his plastic face drawn tight and sharp, exhausted eyes bugged with horror. Gregory, listen to me! You have to turn them back on before he- <laughs> Just like that, they ran out of time. The brilliant crystalline light was killed before Sun even got to finish his sentence, shutting off and hurtling them back into inky darkness. For good this time. Sun's grip increased tenfold, like a bear trap snapping shut, each finger stabbing so deep into his shoulder blades it began to hurt. He froze up in that locked position, eyes twitching and lip quivering, sunbeams beginning to wilt. He wasn't looking at Gregor anymore, his gaze glassy and focused on something very far away. Sun? Gregory whispered, trying and failing to pull away from his hold. Finally, Sun's mouth moved, but it wasn't his voice that came out. It's past your bedtime. It was barely a whisper, but it was enough to terrify them both. Sun jerked back, finally releasing him from the crushing grip, staggering backwards and clawing at his face as if a whole nest of hornets were swarming in his eyes. <gasps> no, no, please! Sun screamed. Please, don't put me to sleep! I'm not tired! I'm not tired! In response, one of the soft triangular sunbeams zipped back and disappeared into his head, even as Sun scrabbled to try and pull it back out with pinching fingers. Turn them back on! Sun cried, his body racked with a spasm as he fought against some unseen force. Turn them back on! Turn them back on! Turn them back on! Please! His yells finally kicked Gregory out of the stunned statue that he had become, ripping his eyes away from the mortifying display, instead trying to focus on the generator's various buttons and switches. It was almost too dark to see with his unadjusted eyes, but even as the shapes became clear, none of them made any sense, his brain drawing a blank. It was so much more complicated than normal generators. Why was it so complicated? What was wrong with the person who had designed it? He caught sight of the Fazbear Entertainment logo, which answered his question for him. Of course, of course, this stupid company would make the most inconvenient generator possible. 
A pained sob from behind him made Gregory whirl back around to see Sun literally peeling the paint off of his face in his panic. Two more of the sunbeams were gone already. The hand that wasn't holding his head was clutching at his stomach and chest, his body twisting and jerking like a colony of live maggots were trying to chew their way out of him. Oh, stop, please! I'm not tired! I'm not tired! I'm not tired! He was rambling hysterically, each word going so fast it cluttered into the one in front of it. Stop! Please stop! I'm not tired! I'm not tired! Don't do it, please! I don't know how to turn the lights back on! Gregory called back, feeling more useless than ever. What?! I don't know how to turn on this type of generator! What do I do?! I don't know! I'm not even supposed to be- ah! <laughs> Sun broke off into a scream, three more sunbeams withering back into his head where the others had gone. Sun's hyperventilation reached an awful peak as Gregory tried desperately to pull and push every button and lever he could reach, even though none of them seemed to be doing anything. Gregory turned just in time to see what happened to the daycare attendant. All the sunbeams were now completely gone, and Sun's delirious, frightened eyes were not looking at Gregory anymore, instead fixated on what must be a hallucinated figure beside him, pleading one last time to them. No, 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 wait, no! Sun shrieked at nobody. Don't put me to sleep! Don't put me to sleep! Please don't hurt him, Moody! He's just a- ah! Ah! He broke off into a wail of pain, the sound cutting off as his figure locked up into a violent spasm. Sun stayed like that for a second or two, staring at the sky-painted ceiling, whimpering up at whoever he thought he saw next to him. He kept on scratching and picking at his face in one last hopeless attempt to resist as his eyelids drooped, frantic gasps slowing down. He crumbled to the floor with a moan as he was dragged into sleep, like a puppet with its strings cut. He didn't stay that way, though. The golden animatronic was overcome with tremors as its inner machinery rattled to life, clicks and whirs cutting through the air, the hisses of metal against metal scraping through Gregory's ears. In the dark, sun began to change. <laughs>